In this tutorial we will check out the new Chaos Scatter implementation from the V-Ray 6 public beta. We will explore how to distribute vegetation on top of geometry, then check out various randomization techniques and finally learn how we can use spline shapes to exclude certain areas. So here I prepared a little scene and we have this island here in the center, which at the moment is missing some vegetation, some trees and stuff like this. So I'm gonna use Chaos Scatter in order to distribute some trees here on this island. The scene is set up quite simple using some Megascans assets and also some assets from the Chaos Cosmos library. If you want to know how to integrate Megascans assets into V-Ray, there is a tutorial that you can find in my channel where I explain this whole process. But now let's find out how to use Chaos Scatter in order to distribute some trees here on this island. So as a first step, you can check if you have the Chaos Scatter toolbar here enabled. And that are those three icons up here. And in here, we can easily create a Chaos Scatter object. So once I click this button, let me add this new Chaos Scatter object in here. And then in the modifier tab, we can then assign certain kind of properties. So in the first step, we need to select our target object. That means the object where we scatter, in our case, the trees onto. So I can just do this by using this plus button and then select our big island in here. And then we need to define which kind of models we want to scatter onto the surface. And for this, I prepared already three different trees in here. You can see they all have three different colors for now so that we can easily see which trees are distributed where. And now let's just use this list select button, then select our trees in here. And then once we do this, we confirm this and we can see now that our trees are randomly scattered onto our whole island in here. The reason why those trees have these kind of weird colors for now is because I want to show you the frequency adjustments in here. And if you select one of the tree models, for example, our tree number two, that's this purple one, we can just say that this one has a much higher frequency, for example, a value of five. That means it exists five times more than the other two trees in here. Or we can say, for example, the yellow tree, our tree number three, will have a frequency of three. And then we have a lot more purple and yellow trees and just very few of those green trees in here. So with these frequency adjustments, you can adjust the frequency for each of your models and then this way get a mix that you want to. For now, we just don't want to have any different kind of frequency. I just go back for a frequency of one for all of them. And then we also assign a different shader here to our trees so that we don't have these kind of weird colors in here anymore. So once I open my material editor, I have the three different shaders for the three different trees in here. And I will select now the second tree. And instead of this purple tree leaves, I will add the green tree leaves in here. You can see my proxy objects here update, but also immediately the chaos scatter object here updates. And we'll do the same thing for the third tree in here. So that all of those three trees are now using exactly the same kind of shader. So now all of those trees have a very similar greenish color tone in here. And if I wanted now, I could randomize those color tones a little bit more. And to do that, I just go into the area where I have my leaf color. So that would be here, my leaf color. And I just put this in a composite. And then on top of this composite, I have a V-Ray multi sub texture, which I set to random and then by render ID. And I just assign a bunch of different kind of colors in here. And then once I increase here the opacity of this layer, for example, something like 75, you can see that now all of my trees here get this kind of randomized colors from my V-Ray multi sub texture in here. So this way you can easily like randomize the colors of your trees a little bit so that not all of the trees look exactly the same way, but they can still share the same shader across all of those objects in here. Now let's dial back this effect a little bit, maybe to a value of 50 in here. Then we can also hide our trees so that we don't get distracted by them. And we can go back to our scatter object in order to now play around with the settings a little bit more. So now in this scattering tab here, you can see that there's a max limit amount set and that acts as a safety mechanism so that no matter what kind of other settings you dial in down here, it would never allow in this case more than 1 million instances. And that basically prevents your 3ds Max from freezing, crashing, running out of memory and so on. Then there's different kind of modes. We have a 1D mode where our target object would need to be a spline and then those trees would be 
placed along the spline. We have our 2D surface mode, that's the one that we're using at the moment. Then we also have a three-dimensional mode where our target object's bounding box would be used and then those trees would be placed in a three-dimensional array in this bounding box. And you can also get some interesting results with this. But in our case, let's switch back here to the surface mode where all of those trees are placed here on the surface of our target object. So at the moment we have the problem that we have way too many trees and way too many areas in here. We have to find some way to limit this kind of amount of trees in here. And there's different kind of ways. So first we can choose our distribution in here. At the moment we're just choosing a fixed amount of 1000 trees. So we could for example go to a lower value that means 100 in this case. And then we just only scatter 100 trees around here our island. If we don't want to define here a fixed value of trees to scatter around on the whole island, we can also use this square parameter in here. Let's say, for example, we choose one tree and then this tree would be distributed in one square meter. That means now we suddenly have a huge amount of trees again because each square meter will get one tree here placed. You can see there's, of course, way too many. So we can choose, for example, that we say we have one tree every five square meters. And then I think this looks already a little bit better. We don't need to define here a fixed amount of trees that we need, and it will be evenly distributed here across the surface. So now our problem is that we also have trees growing in areas where we don't really want them to grow. So you can see we have trees growing here at the side of the cliffs, which are normally way too steep in order to have any trees growing in there. And we can use this slope limitation parameters in here in order to prevent that from happening. So now in here, if I choose, for example, a maximum amount of, let's say, 30 degrees, you can see that many of those trees which are growing in these kind of steeper areas now are not allowed to grow there anymore and now those trees are only in these kind of more flatter areas in here. So now I think it looks already quite good. The only problem is that there are some trees in this area here which I don't like. So we have to find some way to exclude these trees from this area. And in here, there is this area tab where we can add some splines and those splines will act as exclusion areas. So I have a spline already set up in here. So you can see this spline here from the top basically just defines this area where I don't want to have any trees. And then in my chaos scatter object, I can then add this spline. And once I do this, you will see that this area is now excluded and we don't have any trees growing in this kind of area in here then. Now I just want to randomize the appearance here of my trees a little bit and this I can do in this transformations tab. So for the moment, for example, they all have exactly the same kind of scaling. There's no variety in scaling, but I can choose here a from two range. So for example, let's choose something extreme. Let's go from 10% to 150%. That means like some of those trees are now extremely big and some of those trees are now very, very small. You can see some tiny trees in here. And this range is probably way too big. So let's just choose something like 50 to 125 and then all of those trees are having a slightly different kind of scaling in here and we can get a lot more variety to show up. You can do similar things for the rotation and the translation for the rotation by default it's already set to 0 to 360 in the Z axis that means all of those trees have a random rotation here and they are not all from the same angle and we can also make some of those trees here appear as bushes by defining here the Z translation range for example we can choose something like minus 5 and then some of those trees would be pushed into the floor and it maybe would look like some bushes. Let's choose a higher value here of minus 10, for example. You can see some of them are now even disappearing in the floor, but it makes them look a little bit like bushes. And now we would need to increase the amount because now some of those trees are under the surface. And we can do this here by choosing, for example, a count of two trees per five square meters and then you can see we can easily fill up this area here again. We will have a lot of more different kind of trees in here showing up. And I think it looks much more interesting like this. 
There are a whole lot more settings here to play around with than we have time for to cover in this video. I just want to show you like the basic procedure of what it takes in order to set up a very basic scatter. So from my testing, it seems to work pretty well so far, pretty stable. And while it doesn't have the same amount of flexibility and adjustability like commercial plugins such as Forest Pack and so on, I think this is totally enough for like 90 to 95% of the cases where you just need to procedurally scatter around some objects. And I think it's quite simple, quite stripped down, quite easy to understand. And as I said, I think it's quite well implemented. So that's it basically for this video. I just want to show how to quickly scatter around some objects here on this island and everything else you can discover by yourself by joining the open beta and check it out by yourself. So until then, see you in the next tutorial. Take care and see you soon.